uh, second book in the works. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a passion project uh, uh, by definition. Um, Post-World War II, uh, small town Michigan, um, very much inspired also by uh, a lot of my students and some of the things that they go through even in the 21st century, even though this book takes place in 1946 and very much inspired by my late grandma and some of the things that she went through. So it's a, it's a story of Jane who um, uh, in the middle of the war when she's only 12 and uh, her father dies uh, uh, on a mission in Europe, um, uh, some powers manifest. Um, this is not in the world of time, but like she's got strength and she's got speed. Okay. Nothing flashy, but because the world is what the world is, she's got to hide it. And so thematically you've got this book. Uh, and now we flash forward to 1946 when all the soldiers are home and her mother, who was a legit, uh, Rosie, the riveter no longer has a job and the family can't support themselves. And Jane goes off to hopefully get a secretarial job at the same factory that her mom worked at, that her dad worked at before the war. And, um, and her strength is kind of revealed and she kind of gets this job there. Uh, um, it's, it's very much a story thematically about, about, you know, being in the closet about who you are. Right. And, uh, I think my favorite thing about this story is there's so much um, actual real family history and truth in the setting and the, the reality of it. Uh, it takes place mostly, the main setting is in this, this factory that um, is making Marsden mats uh, during the war and has a contract effort. And this is a real store or a real factory in Plymouth, Michigan that was started out as a place called Wall Wire. And they, did, they made wires before the war and then they got a government contract to make Marsden mats. And those are, even if you don't know the name, those are those big long strips of like corrugated metal that became the temporary runways in Europe and the Pacific mm -hmm. that they, so you, know, you just cut down a, a bit of jungle or a beach and you've got a runway. Yeah. And uh, only two factories in the United States kept that contract after the war that led into the Berlin airlift and stuff. And there was one in Alabama and there was one here. And my great grandfather actually worked in that factory. And then the best part, my favorite part about putting this project together was that there was this research aspect where I went and found the factory and got in check this out five days before they tore it apart and turned it into like uh like sectioned off office building things. Wow. and i got to see all the original machinery and fittings and woodwork and the brickwork and i've got like video it so like i was fired up about that part of it um it's just it's a, it, it's this great opportunity that i've got I've, the first script is done out of like four issues everything else is plotted out uh the the, the character bios are there the story beats are there the research is there um and it, it's this great opportunity to, to talk about something else I was very passionate about, which is like, you know, I've, got, I've had all these young ladies come through my classroom over the last handful of years, right? The, the, these eighth graders becoming high schoolers and especially my, my, my girls who still struggle even in the 21st century about truly being comfortable with who they are. Mm -hmm. um, whether that be a gender thing or a race thing or a religion thing and they still feel somehow encumbered by the truth of who they are and they can't necessarily express that as much as they want to or be as uncomfortable as their skin as they can. And then you extrapolate that back to 1946 where, where, where gender and race are just exponentially more right. yep. um, you know, problematic for people. And, uh, and getting to tell the story you know, kind of in a character that embodies some of the traits and hopes and dreams that my grandmother had at that age um, it's been really, really special to me. So um, 